Good morning, good morning, happy Friday, and welcome to the final Heaven and Hell episode of the very first week of this new launch. Now, this one, <laughs> this one for, for a heads up for people who are following along on via the podcast or via IGTV, you're going to get the abridged version. So you're going to get the 10 minute version because that's where it goes out. Uh, but stick around if you're with us on YouTube or Facebook because it's Friday and we have traditionally over the last few weeks started doing a Friday fun things video. And so this episode is going to be slightly longer if you're watching those places. If you're not watching this on Facebook or YouTube, you can next week. Uh, and so uh, you want to go to facebook.com forward slash Ms. L. Edwards uh, to get the full version. But it is going to be a slightly longer episode uh, for that reason. But don't worry. Instagram and podcast people, I will say goodbye to you before we <laughs> head into the next bit. But I would also encourage you to come back and listen to the full version as well. So today we are exploring a bit of a celebration, really. Now, Playground members know that on Friday, I love to encourage you to, to take a moment to ponder on those things that have been really good this week. I like to celebrate and encourage you to celebrate any day of the week. Uh, but we do have the praise report group, especially for for. Those, those reminders and those shout outs and those, yay, it went really well this week. And I have to say, I am so thankful this week because when I sat down last weekend uh, with Holy Spirit and said, okay, so what's May going to look like? Uh, and I had no idea that we'd be doing this and the way it would unfold and the number of people who said yes to being involved in our, in our uh, play adventure community project, which incidentally, I know I haven't actually mentioned on the podcast yet, I make a note to self, I will do that on Monday uh, in case anybody who's listening along wants to be involved. Uh, but I was sitting this morning and saying, okay, God, so how do we wrap this up with, with a nice, neat bow? Uh, because yes, I'm excited and yes, it's been a brilliant week, but I can't sit here for 10 minutes and go, yay, this week's been amazing, God, you're so good. We want some extra content. And so he reminded me of four very specific examples of why he really is an amazing dad and gives amazing gifts. Uh, and yes, I am going to have to refer to my notes because I can't remember all in my head. He told me, Faith, answers, Holy Spirit, motivational gifts. We're going to take about six minutes to dig into that, specifically what he was sharing. So there's that reminder, first of all. You know, sometimes we say, oh, I really want to do this thing. And uh, and I, I just need a bit more faith. I want to remind you this morning that the faith that you have comes from God. You don't have to willpower your way to be more faithful. And, oh, I'm going to try really, really hard. God gives you faith. And so all you have to do is go, God, I'm really excited, challenged, insert your own adjective here about this thing that we're doing. Can I have more faith, please? Uh, and and he, he loves you and he, he will give you more faith. And faith the size of a mustard seed is enough, is all that you need to move a mountain. But you don't have to willpower it. You don't have to try really, really hard. The second thing I'm really excited about is the way that God gives us answers. So when I sat down with my notebook uh, last weekend, I, God and I set some really fun goals. And then the question, the prompt I had was, okay, what is it that you need from God? And one of the things is I said, look, I need strategies and ideas of how we're actually going to do this thing. Because just writing stuff down isn't enough. Yes, there is power in writing things down, writing those goals down, seeing them, seeing reminders of them. I've got my whiteboard next to me. But just looking at that stuff is not going to get things done. It's not going to happen. I mean, occasionally you might have examples in your life where things just miraculously happened. Of course, there are miracles, but miracles also happen in those daily actions. So I said to God, look, I want actual specific strategies. What is it I'm going to do? I don't want to just sit around and twiddle my thing fingers and hope. And that's how this podcast, the, the season two of the podcast came about. He said, tell the heaven and hell stories on video. It actually ties in with the fourth point, motivational gifts. Romans 12, in the playground, you've got the first bit of training um, specific around that coming out next week as a heads up. Uh, and uh, he he made me to be me and he made you to be you. And as you're going to explore and we go through Romans 12, what that actually looks like. But the reminder, the very first, some of the heaven and hell stories were written. And that's great. I love writing. But one of the things he was nudging me around is actually, Al, you can do it to video and it can be fun and engaging. And I love doing this. i got to be honest, this week has been amazing. Uh, and I'm really thankful to people who have been here live as well. I'm going to give an extra wave to those people. Uh, <laughs> because it's really nice to know that there's people on the other side of this little dot of a, of a lens that I'm looking at. But whether you're here you know, live or whether you catch it via the replay afterwards. I get to do this and it's really fun. And so the thing that he reminded me, one of the answers he gave me was do it like this, do it, do it to, to camera, share these stories out loud uh, in a way that I made you to be. 
And the same is true for you as well. When you, you ask him those questions and you tell him what you need, he's an amazing dad. He wants to give you amazing gifts. He wants to help you out. And so every time that you've seen an example of a parent doing really, really well, they are just a tiny whisper of just how amazing God is as your dad. Uh, and so I'm jumping ahead to that motivational gifts piece, but he made you to be you. There is a, you know, there are in Romans 12 only seven gifts but actually one of the things I'm really excited about is exploring okay yes those are seven gifts but we also get gifts from the Holy Spirit and we also Jesus displayed all of those seven gifts because he was like the ultimate human and and God and we can as we grow and mature and, and do life more with God we can develop other aspects of those gifts and still do that in a way that allows us to be who God made us to be. It's really exciting. And the other gift, of course, as well, is the Holy Spirit. Jesus said lots of times in the Bible, and no, I don't have the reference in front of me, but he said lots of times in the Bible, you know, I'm going to send, I have to go back to my father, and I'm, but I'm not going to leave you orphaned. I'm going to send the Holy Spirit, your teacher, your counsellor, your comforter. And so one of the amazing things that I've been exploring this week is part of the gift is actually the way that your mind is wired your mind is wired brilliantly and beautifully such that the more that you for example look for those silver linings because of the way that your mind was created and designed and crafted the more that you do that the easier it becomes to see those silver linings and at the same time you've also got the gift of the holy spirit put those two together poof wow you know it's just like amazing supercharged Uh, and so that's really exciting that every single person on this planet regardless of whether they let god love them yet they still have that amazing mind power too it's not like god when he sort of like crafted you good okay and you and you and you i'm gonna give you really good minds that can do this cool stuff everybody that's just amazing to me Uh, and so i want to encourage you to ask god questions Get really specific. Those things that are niggling at you, those dreams, those desires, those things that you're excited about, he's excited about those things too. And you don't have to sit there and go, "Mm, I don't know what to do. And the other thing as well, I was looking at my notes, the other thing that he was reminding me of this morning and also like I don't, at some point in the night, I remember waking up pondering on this. It's really, really important that you don't wait until life is normal and like straightforward and everything is quite easy we go through seasons in life and this can vary from day to day week to week but it's really important that you don't wait until life feels okay life is steady everything's going great now i can do this thing that god's calling me to do and now i can be me no we need you to be you today we need you and it's god helping you of course that's the the start of romans 12 here's what i want you to do god helping you I refer you back to that faith piece earlier on. You don't have to willpower your way to do this. But it's really, really important. God is inviting you to step into everything that he has for you. Your joy really will bring salvation to the nations. And we need you to to own that. And start owning that and saying yes to that invitation right now. Don't wait. Because one of the things, one of the pictures I keep getting, uh, and the example that he, he brought to mind, I want to say thank you, Holy Spirit, for reminding me, because one of the um, the things he reminded me earlier on was Abraham. So when we read the story of Abraham and how God called him to sacrifice his son, to us in 2021, hearing that, we're like, well, why on earth would he think that that would be a good thing to do? But back in the culture at the time, they were all you know, offering children to to, to appease the gods. It was a normal part of of, of that culture. And the thing that, that God has been sort of working through with me is that we are we are where we are today and God is inviting us to do life with him in our culture. And part of that is you stepping up with a smile on your face. Yes, days are difficult, asking God to help you, but by you stepping up and bringing your joy and that peace that you can only really get from Jesus, you will bring salvation to the nations. Now, this in the episode is where we are going to say goodbye to our IGTV and our podcast listeners, uh, because they only, for the for the purposes of the platforms where they go out, uh, and our Alexa listeners, it only is 10 minutes long. So I'm going to say an official goodbye to those people with a reminder that uh, if you enjoyed this bit, do come and check out the, the next bit that we're going to explore uh, because it's going to be fun too but to you people thank you for being here uh, and i will look forward to catching up with you next week everybody else stick with me because one of the pieces that it's really really important and he's been niggling me around a lot is that 
as you step forward and be you, as you own your quirks, your foibles, your eccentricities, as you own doing day-to-day life with God, not everyone is going to get it. I have seen this time and time again, and I've you know you know that expression, don't read the comments, because it's true. You might either read a blog post or listen to something like a podcast or watch a video, and it's really empowering and it's brilliant. And then you glance at the comments and you're like, oh, some people really don't like this very much. And I've seen this on, there's, I'm not going to call name names, but there are certain uh, churches, there are certain really Holy Spirit led organizations doing amazing work out there, building the kingdom, doing stuff that's calling people to Jesus. And there are other people who love Jesus who are slating them. And that frustrates me. It blows my mind. How is it possible but that we can have these people that every, they all say they love Jesus and yet they're like this. They just, they just can't agree. What is that about? And I don't believe that my job right now, in this season at least, is to, to step into those fights. I instead am here to, to speak life and to encourage you to, to be you with God, and to, but also to acknowledge that not everyone is going to get it. There are going to be occasions when you're just going to have to go, okay, you don't get it. I love you. God, help me. Please show me how you love, <laughs> how you love this person, and then step away. Now, yes, we are sometimes called to speak out. We are. There are occasions where we go, hmm. You know, if we see an injustice, if we see unkindness, if we see people just not being not being kind to each other i for one i'm not going to sit there and go oh well it's not my fight no i'm not suggesting that you do that but at the same time you do need to pick your battles but equally as important more important is it's time for you to surround yourself with those people who will help lift you up who when you're having a less easy day or you're having a challenging moment in an otherwise decent day will be there for you be that 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 safe space that community and yes i am going to give a shout out to the itchy soul playground i know we've got angela and acelia here live who are both members of the playground uh and you know they are i I love having them there but regardless of whether you get that community and that support and those people lifting you up within the itchy soul playground or somewhere else more important is that you get that support that community the encouragement the training the the people who are going to go okay let me let if say for example you hear you share something that you believe that god is laying on your heart and then someone else goes bip, 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 right you need i mean that's just me that's like shortcut hand for those times when people are like not the opposite of speaking life you know and it can cause you to pause it happens to me too you know it happens to all of us we can i i'll be quite transparent with you this week as i've been sharing stuff more on social media and putting things out there there was, I think it was this morning or yesterday, one over the last couple of days where there was a notification to say that one of the posts on Instagram had some comments and there was a minute, I'm like, until it loaded going, okay, is someone going to criticize this? I'm being quite honest. And and yet we can't shy away from that. Just because people aren't going to get it doesn't mean that you're not to to speak into those situations and you're not going to get it right all the time. You know, we make mistakes, but God is a big, loving, gracious, amazing God. And as we said, I think it was last week, your yes is more important to him than, than you getting it right. You don't need to be perfect in order to, to step into this invitation he has for you. But it is really important that as you are stepping forward and exploring whatever it is that God is calling you to do, uh, and that when people come in and they may be, you know, did God really say? It's that Adam and Eve moment in the garden when the serpent, you know, Satan came. Did God really say? Yes, Holy Spirit can speak into that and he can minister to you and he he does and he can, he's your comforter and you take it to God first. And at the same time, Adam needed Eve. Even though Adam was walking with God in the garden, he still needed a human companion. We are made for community. And so you need people around you to go, okay, I hear what those people are saying. Let's explore that. Or they'll say to you, don't worry about it. They don't get it move on you know so but and we we you can have that in the itchy soul playground there is that the yes there's the the training yes we have the coaching calls yes you have the holy spirit love notes but you also have that community space where you can share things uh and so i should say i should give you the link for anybody who's watching who's going oh i quite like that uh com forward slash join uh and um yes it is a paid model uh 
as I've said before, if you're somebody who is following along and you genuinely can't afford and you need community and you want community here, just reach out to me. Uh, but for everybody else, it's less than a pound a day. But more important, if you, whether you, like I say, whether you get that support and that community in the Itchy Soul Playground or somewhere else, I would encourage you to ask God, who are those people or where are those people? I'm looking at my notes. Where are those people in your life? If you're not sure, if you're feeling a bit like a lone wolf right now, ask God, where are those people in my life? And if they're not, if you haven't got them yet, where can you find them? And he will lead you because he doesn't want you to be left feeling stuck. He also reminded me that even John the Baptist had people. You know, if you, if you look in the Bible and think of characters, they're not characters. Characters implies that they're not real. Um, characters as in like people, <laughs> humans. Okay, so if we look at humans in the Bible um, who maybe sort of seemed like they didn't have a lot of people around them. The first person that always comes to mind for me is John the Baptist, because we know that he went out and he ate like locusts and wore camel hair, and he was quite, I imagine, quite austere and a little bit out there uh, for, for the, you know, he'd seem out there to us today, but he probably seemed quite out there for the people in his day as too, his day as well. But at the same time, even he had people around him. So if you remember, he came and he you know, he baptised uh, Jesus and he had, John had his own followers because some of his followers then went and followed Jesus. And so even those lone wolf, people who look like lone wolves in the Bible, uh, they're not really. You know, there are no lone, lone wolves in the kingdom. You're not going to try and do this on your own. Even... I'm trying to think of do I, like people, even people who like live on their own and don't really like people very much. They usually have pets. Uh, we are we are made for community to love and be loved. And so I really would encourage you start opening. Ask God to open your all of your senses for where those where that community, where that support is for you, because it's really important. We need you to have that support in this next season, or in this current season, whatever it looks like, this bit that we're doing now, I feel like, you know, we've had this pandemic. God has, has had his people pausing and preparing and, and getting ready for what's next. And now things are starting to open up and we're starting to be able to go out, whether that's go out over the internet like we're doing with these, with these videos, but also going out into your community. You are called to bring love and joy into, into all of those circumstances that, that you step into today and over the days and weeks and months ahead. Yes, God helping you, but you need to have that support as well. And and it's 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 gonna be really powerful. I I hesitate and I'm gonna say that I really do feel like God is saying that He's ready for that that fresh new awareness of His love. People are searching. I had this conversation yesterday that Amicelia and I are in a in a, a group together. We had this conversation yesterday uh, about how people, you know, in Christian circles we tend to criticize and look down on and frown upon the new agey type stuff but actually no it's not about going oh no look at you it's about going okay well, i see that you're searching for something paul said to the romans they had this temple to the unknown god he said okay you want to know this god let me introduce you to him and we're called to do that as well and those people that you come into contact with in day-to-day -day life you have those opportunities to 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 shine, to shine Jesus's love into those people's lives. And at the same time, you need to have people around you who can support you and lift you up. Whether that's lift you up in prayer, whether that's lift you up with encouragement. I don't want you to be a lone wolf. I don't want you to feel like you have to do this all on your own and really try really, really hard. No, this life is meant to be joyful and fun and delightful. God is an amazing, amazing dad and he really does give amazing gifts. Thank you for being here this week. Like I say, I want to give an extra special thank you to Acelia and Angela. I think they've been here almost every single... Acelia's been here every single day. I think Angela only missed one. Um, and thank you for being here, both of you. And a, a, a quick heads up as well for anybody who, like I say, is catching this on YouTube uh, or via the replay. If you want to join us live, and you can have a little shout out too, um, we are going to be doing this again next week, uh, 9 a.m. UK time, Monday through Friday, which is 10 a.m. in South Africa. I had tip to Acelia. <laughs> it's quite early in the morning for folks on the East Coast and it's like 1am for Pacific time. So I know it's not going to be for everybody, so don't feel any pressure. But if you would like to be part of the, the live studio audience, um, then that's when we'll be doing it again next week as well. And for YouTube people, it's facebook.com forward slash Ms L Edwards is where you can do that. Whew, 
So this is the end of our bumper Friday fun things edition. Uh, and uh, thank you, thank you for watching. Thank you for being here all this week. I shall look forward to Celia and Angela. I shall see you in the playground. Everybody else, I look forward to catching up with you soon. I'm going to wish you a wonderful, wonderful weekend. Have a fabulous Friday. You beat me to it. Have a fab weekend, Angela. <laughs> Have a fabulous Friday, a wonderful weekend, and I shall catch up with you very, very soon. Take care. Bye-bye.